I'll just cut to the chase. Big tech's out to get conservatives. That's not a suspicion. That's not a hunch. That's a fact. July 20th, 2020, Google removes the home pages of Breitbart and the Daily Caller. Just last night, we learned Google has censored Breitbart so much, traffic has declined 99%. June 16th, 2020, Google threatens to demonetize and ban the Federalists. April 19th, 2020, Google and YouTube announce a policy censoring the content that conflicts with recommendations of the World Health Organization. Now, think about that. The World Health Organization, the organization that lied to us, the organization that shield for China... And if you contradict something they say, they can say whatever they want. They can lie for China. They can chill for China. You say something against them, you get censored. June 29, 2020, Amazon bans President Trump's account on Twitch after he raises concerns about defunding the police. June 4, 2020, Amazon bans a book critical of the coronavirus lockdowns written by a conservative commentator. May 27, 2020, Amazon Smile won't let you give to the Family Research Council and the Alliance Defense Fund, but you can give to Planned Parenthood. Facebook, June 19, 2020, takes down posts from President Trump's re-election campaign. November 1, 2018, Facebook silences a pro-life organization's advertisement. May 19, 2016, Facebook, former Facebook employees admit Facebook routinely suppresses conservative views. And I haven't even mentioned Twitter who we actually invited, Mr. Chairman. We asked for you guys to invite them as one of our witnesses. You guys said, no, I haven't even mentioned them two years ago. They shadow banned two members of this committee. Four members of Congress were shadow banned two years ago. 435 in the House, 100 in the Senate, 535, only four. Only four. Gates, Meadows, Nunes, Jordan, only four get shadow banned. And of course, what did Mr. Dorsey tell us? He said, oh, it was just a glitch in our algorithm. Just to, I ask him, what did you put in the algorithm? The name's Gates, Meadows, Nunes, Jordan? I mean, if I had a nickel for every time I heard it was just a glitch, I wouldn't be as wealthy as our witnesses, but I'd be doing all right. We've heard that excuse time and time again. May 28, Twitter censors President Trump's tweet on the riots in Minneapolis. May 29, 2020, Twitter censors White House, the White House for quoting the president's comments about the riots in Minneapolis. June 23rd, 2020, Twitter censors the president again for saying he'll enforce the rule of law against any autonomous zone in Washington, D.C. You can tweet all you want about the autonomous zone that happened in Seattle, but the president tweets that he's not going to have one in Washington, D.C. Oh, 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 nope, can't do that. You get banned. You get censored. Dozens of examples. Oh, I forgot one. I forgot one. Just last week, July 21st. July 21st. This is what Twitter did. The leader of Iran, the Islamic Republic of Iran. This is, this is, this is from the largest state sponsor of terrorism, Twitter allows this tweet, quote, the Islamic Republic of Iran will never forget the martyrdom of Soleimani and will definitely strike a reciprocal blow in the United States. So you can threaten the citizens of this great country, the leader of the largest state sponsor of terrorism, that's just fine. But, oh, the president says he's not going to allow some autonomous zone in D.C. and he gets, he gets censored. All kinds of examples, most of them from this year. And that's what's that's what's I think critical for us all to understand. Most of them from this year and election year. And that's what concerns me and so many Americans, because we saw what Google did in 2016. We all know about the email the day after the election. Where top executives at Google email chain where they talked about the silent donation Google made to the Clinton campaign. Now, thank goodness it wasn't enough. And in spite of their efforts to help Clinton, President Trump won. But we're 97 days before an election. And the power, as the previous chairman and ranking member have said, the power these companies have to impact what happens during an election, what people, what American citizens get to see prior to their voting is pretty darn important. That's why this committee hearing is important. Look, we, we all think the free market's great. We think competition's great. We love the fact that these are American companies. But what's not great is censoring people, censoring conservatives, and trying to impact elections. And if it doesn't end, there has to be consequences. There have to be consequences. That's what I'm concerned about, and I think what so many Americans are concerned about. So I look forward to hearing from our witnesses, Mr. Chairman.